اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور سل اماما عاش في العلم دهورا ودهور يطلب العلم ببذل حتى ضمته البحور سل اماما عاش في العلم دهورا ودهور يطلب العلم ببذل حتى ضمته البحور صابرا في العلم صبرا حتى سموه الصبور يخرج العلم بفأل مثل ريحان الزهور صابرا في العلم صبرا حتى سموه الصبور يخرج العلم بفأل مثل ريحان الزهور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور كن اذا سموك اسما لتكن مثل الحضور كن رفيقا كن عظيما كن كما تلك الصقور كن اذا سموك اسما لتكن مثل الحضور كن رفيقا كن عظيما كن كما تلك الصقور واقيا بالعلم نحو النجم مزدان شكور رافضا كل التدني رافضا نفس الغرور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور ابن مسعود فقيه عالم احيا القفور فاذا اعطاك رايا كان سهما في النحور ابن مسعود فقيه عالم احيا القفور فاذا اعطاك رايا كان سهما في النحور وعلي ثم بالدين معاذ لا يبور اقرا التاريخ تروي عنه افواه سطور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور ان سالت عن امام او فقيه في الامور ابن عباس ترنم وسيبقى في الصدور ان سالت عن امام او فقيه في الامور ابن عباس ترنم وسيبقى في الصدور فهو كالشمعه تذهب حتى تاتينا بنور ساهرا بالليل علم وباوقات سحور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اذ بكى النبي يوما سمعا صوتا جهور يا ابي كم روت عنك الليالي والعصور اذ بكى النبي يوما سمعا صوتا جهور يا ابي كم روت عنك الليالي الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Welcome to Islamic Oasis live again this Friday بإذن الله تعالى. Dear brothers and sisters, as you know, we have been for the you know every Friday we are trying to bring topics and discuss topics that are very vital to the Muslim Ummah. Last جمعة. Uh, I'm sure you, you, many of you were following it and we saw the results of, of, of that uh, uh, discussion last Juma uh, regarding the conventions and uh, the, the political consequences of these conventions, the Islamic consequences of these conventions, what is being promoted, who are being promoted, the consequences of such events on our families and as, uh, as an ummah. Uh, and today we have uh, a discussion which is even more uh, vital, important, that needs to be discussed uh, by the Muslims, and that discussion is uh, the role of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. May Allah uh, relieve it from the hands of the Yahud. This discussion is so vital, brothers and sisters, that it has been made uh, into a discussion which almost by design, whether by its media, whether it's politicians, whether it's uh, foreign interventions, countries, outsiders, insiders, 
everyone has tried to do everything possible to make this discussion of Masjid al-Aqsa a discussion, uh, a nationalist a discussion or a discussion regarding just within the Arab population or within a regional, uh, you know, a discussion that happens within a region only. Although it is a masjid and it, this is a place where the Muslims go and pray. Muslims go and pray. It's not that Palestinians go and pray. So, uh, inshallah, we will begin with the discussion uh, uh, with our brothers. We have, of course, Dr. Ashraf. Many of you know he's attended many of our conferences and spoke at uh, many of our uh, conferences. Dr. Ayman also is not new to you guys. Uh, so, I'm not going to waste time with the introductions. Uh, although, as I said, mashallah, barakallahu fikum, you guys are known uh, to fair. our uh, audiences. The question is the narrative that is put out there today. Right? The narrative is if someone, if one of you guys can take a chance or just describe the narrative, why is it that we are having to even put out a topic, Arab or Muslim, regarding Masjid al -Aqsa? You have to say the question goes to who? No, no, <laughs> so anyone, who, who, anyone, anyone, anyone. Because it's a, it's a, this is, you know, and, and then of course you may have your, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakallah khair for uh, hosting us here and having us here on your show and program. And this is a very important topic, the uh, issue of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And to look at the issue and why it's end up to be an Arab issue, we have to look at the history. Uh, so, and we're not going to go back into the history a lot. We're going to just gonna go back for around 120 years. <laughs> and before, just and quickly go over that. 120 years, 130 years, the Uthmani Khilafah was the, was the power mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, you know, knocking and making the European nations not sleep because of the threats of the Uthmani Khilafah. And they understood this, that Islam is coming with a power. And that power is coming from their aqidah, from their ideology. So they understood this. And now the Uthmani Khilafah, the Khilafah Islami became weak. So they took it an opportunity to uh, now to go and implant within the Muslim Ummah, within the Muslim Ummah, a cancerous entity that's there. They will be using it all the time to keep the Muslim Ummah divided. In the history, you have the uh, Sykes Pico Agreement, which is dividing the Muslim lands, especially in the in the Middle East, into the current Jordan, Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, uh, Iraq, Syria, and all of that. And then after the Uthmani Khilafah was uh, demolished, then you have the the Turkish uh, government that was established. So created these borders, divided that big giant entity into a small cartoon. But what's the guarantee that these countries, these small countries that are, that are created, they're not going to come back. Because from the history and the Europe, especially Britain and France, they read our history and they understood that Islam, Islam, especially at the times, it's sometimes it's strong in a ruling system and sometimes it's weak. Palestine, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa was occupied twice, but the Muslims returned and they freed it and they freed it. So what's the guarantee that this is not going to happen again. So they implanted the issue of Palestine, the issue of the Zionist entity in the middle, in the center of a hot issue to the Muslims to keep it divided. And that's to stop the return of what they call it at that time, the Eastern issue. The Eastern issue, which is, uh, which is the issue of the Islam coming back strong and coming from the East and threatening Europe. Hmm. So the whole goal, the whole goal of implanting it there in the heart of the Muslim land is to stop and prevent the return of Islam that's going to threat Europe. Because Europe, there was no unity in Europe. For a long time, it's divided. So they think from a solution for them to get rid of this Eastern issue, the threat from the East, we have to keep them divided. How do we keep them divided? Divide and conquer, and in the, at the same time, implant an entity in the middle that did keep them busy with each other. So now, uh, so, so this is a historical perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you, so, of course, that's the background of yes. where we are at today. Yes. And why uh, would you like to give a few comments? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-khulq al-mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadun wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma la sahla ila ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta daj'alu hazana ida shi'ta sahla rabbi shrahbi sadri wa yasri li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. So to start with, before I answer your question, how and why did the colonial powers turn it into and their allies from uh, an Islamic issue to become a nationalistic or Arab issue. 
Uh, you just said something uh, in your introduction that uh, this is Masjid Al-Aqsa. Uh, it's actually more than that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-Ladhi barakna hawlahu. Linuriyahu min ayatina. So the, the point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that the Masjid al-Aqsa is the blessed place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in translation the meaning that the surrounding of, which is the whole, we call it Holy Land, which encompasses parts of Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine. That's all a holy land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed and connected to the Muslims' aqidah. So it's not just the, Muslim, or the, the Masjid al-Aqsa that is the Masjid, it is actually what is surrounding Masjid al-Aqsa, you know, which is what we refer to as a holy land. So just to add to it, the whole Palestine, parts of Jordan, uh, actually most of Jordan, Syria and Lebanon is what is surrounded and it uh, the ayah encompasses all of that to be blessed, barakna hawlahu. So it's not just the Masjid al-Aqsa, it is more than that. Why is it uh, turned into a Arab issue, nationalistic issue, uh, nationalistic no, issue no, rather? No, the, the narrative, see, uh, yes. of course, you, you, the, uh, I want you to kind of just, because you know, uh, the, 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 the thing is, yeah. If you allow me to answer your question. Yeah, I just want you to, uh, to, to pin, because why, of why the time, the you need yes, to. Yes, uh, so, uh, the way, again, if it is a Muslim issue, then you gather the hearts and the minds of the Muslims around uh, a topic that is part of their aqidah that is motivating and providing for them a reason to move. Mm -hmm. So Palestine started as a Muslim issue. Now they degraded down to Arab issue. Now they degraded down to a Palestinian issue. It is no, not anymore. Gaza issue. Uh, exactly. So now it's a Gaza or Masjid yeah. al-Aqsa issue. It yes. is not Masjid al-Aqsa issue. Yes. So we have to look at the bigger picture. It is not Masjid al-Aqsa issue. It is a whole land that has been illegally occupied that the Muslims have to the Muslims have to pay attention to and deal with it and solve it the way it was solved before. So what I'm saying is the narrative is that this is Masjid al-Aqsa issue is also something that we have to correct. It is not Masjid al-Aqsa issue. It is a whole land that is being occupied. And the Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith in translation, actually I'll say the hadith in Arabic, then I'll translate it. Man malaka kafiran shibran in ardin muslimin malaka allahu shibran fi jahannam. The one who gives authority and ownership of an inch of land of a Muslim land to the kafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him ownership in hellfire. This is indicating the, the, the prohibition and the, the grave sin in giving the authority and giving the ownership of the Muslims land to the kuffar. So to say, you know, the narrative is that it is turned into Arab issue or Palestinian issue is to make sure that Muslims are not paying attention to the Palestine issue as an issue of the Muslims because Palestine should be a Muslim issue to gather the hearts and the minds and to make them alive. Because if they, you know, if the Muslims recognize that Palestine is an issue of the Muslims, then they will move to deal with it and solve it as they did before. But if it is minimized to Palestinian or Arab issue, then the Muslims will ignore it. This is an issue that I have to deal with because I'm from Palestine. Actually, now I don't have to deal with it because I'm not anymore, you know, living in Palestine. So this is an issue that deals with the Palestinians live in Palestine. This is minimizing the issue and really making it an issue of, uh, uh, you know, so dwarf that you and I will not pay attention to it, should not Let have me, uh, any saying. Uh, okay, so he here's the thing. What, when we look at this issue, I mean, you know, when I was going through all of the historical things, uh, you know, and, and surrounding Masjid al-Aqsa and the events in, in, in that region in general, would I be correct to say that the, the kuffar are minimizing this issue in a way to, yani, to make a point that Islam can't solve this problem. I mean, you see, uh, and it's not, yes, it is a nationalism. They, they kind of made it into a nationalist issue. But would it be correct to say is the, 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 the point that they're trying to make is that while the Muslims are going to Islam to solve the issue, they are trying to, to, to present it as an issue that Islam or Islamic ideology cannot solve this problem. It's actually if the Muslims go with their narrative, mm -hmm. would that would that, would would we be uh, challenging the Quran and the Sunnah? See, the kuffar playing at a different you know front. So it's not only that they want you uh, to realize or to think. I'm sorry, they want the Muslims to think that Islam does not have a solution for such issues. But they also play on the other front that it is not a Muslim issue. Just like they made Kashmir. You know, it's not even a Pakistani issue anymore. It's a Kashmiri issue where, in fact, it's a Muslim issue. Or Chechnya, or, or the, you know, uh, Manimar, or uh, the Igor. 
So all of these are Muslim issues. So Palestine is not isolated from the narrative that the Kufar are trying to play on Muslims. You know, it's not just divide and conquer. Any issue that happens in any locality no, is... But here, here yeah. hold on. I, I, because it's a very important issue. Mm -hmm. The Muslims accepting this, uh, this narrative, are we, uh, are we falling in the trap that they're trying to create, which is Islam does not solve problems? Absolutely. If we, I want you to, yes. Because I want you to address that, you know, whoever wants to hear, Shalom. addressing that, because the, the Muslims have to, you know, the thing is, they are looking at this problem. It's not that they're not, right? I mean, you see people are out there uh, protesting and all kinds of stuff happens, flags, all kinds of issues. But even when they are protesting, you don't see them asking for Islam to be bought back or Islamic solutions. They are all, everything is either secular or nationalistic solutions. So if you can address that, if uh, by even discussing Palestinian issue as a secular or a nationalist issue, are we saying that Allah did not give us a solution to solve these problems? We, we don't want to be grave to accuse Muslims of you know such ideas, but uh, let me explain in, in inshallah one minute. So number one, yes, we if we accept this narrative and we go by it, this means we are being fooled and we subscribe the ideas to the ideas that the kuffar are trying to implement uh, and drive us by, if we accept that, uh, I don't think the Muslims are accepting that. Uh, actually, matter of fact, the recent uh, escalation in the Holy Land, and especially the ones that happened in Ramadan and the previous Ramadan, uh, when you saw the attacks against you know Muslims, the Masjid al-Aqsa, Muslims in Gaza, it proved actually otherwise. The whole you know uh, uh, globe of Muslims from the east all the way to the west actually rose up and you know, start up in solidarity with the Muslims in Palestine. So the fact that the Kuffar are trying to do their best is true, but Alhamdulillah, the Muslims did not fall into that trap that Palestine or Kashmir or uh, uh, Shishan is a local issue, is a national, nationalistic issue. No, Muslims did not fall into that trap. Nevertheless, when we see activities happen here or there, yes, uh, unfortunately, they're not that mature because any activity needs leadership. Hmm. So for Muslims who realize that fact, for Muslims who have that understanding that it should be exposed as a Muslim issue and the plots and the plans of the kuffar should be exposed, we have to be the leaders and we should be the ones in front leading such activities and telling the Muslims that and the Muslims will agree and the Muslims did agree. And if you speak about that, the Mus you will not find true and sincere Muslims motivated to support Palestine or Kashmir or, in, you know, and say anything against that. But the masses need leaders to lead them, you know, in the right track. And I, <coughs> I would like to add something yes. to this. Uh, remember the whole the whole issue of Palestine when it came came about when the Muslim land was divided, the nation states were created, the secularization of the Muslim mind has been created, yeah, and that's and that's a history that's taken that's taken it took very long time. So when we look at the people, at the Muslims now, when they are reacting and acting and trying to find a solution, it's based on what they have learned what they have taught, what they have been taught, hmm. based on which is, which is, I'm looking for my nation, I'm looking for Jordan, I'm looking for Syria, I'm looking for Iraq, I'm looking for Pakistan to solve the problem. I'm looking for the United Nations to go and solve the problem. This is how the Muslims have been taught. And that's what Brother Ayman mentioned, you need a sincere leadership that leads us. The Muslims, they want to solve this issue and they will lie to solve this issue, but they want a sincere leadership that shows them okay, what the solution is. Where should I be going for this? This is an issue of Islam and Muslims. It's not the issue of people in Gaza or Hamas or Fatah or Jordan or Syria or Pakistan or India. It's the issue of all Muslims. This is need to be understood and this is need to be spoken about. Let me let me ask you, this is a very important issue about the issue of Hamas. I'm sure you've read, uh, you're reading what's happening in the last two days with Hamas. Yes. Um, accepting Bashar al-Assad <coughs> as, uh, they, they're bringing him back and they actually had a few meetings, it seems, with Bashar al-Assad and uh, they actually said that they actually accept the leadership of Bashar al-Assad. This was yesterday, last night. Why is it, uh, brothers, that Islamic movements, if you want to call it that, I mean, that's what they call themselves. Why is it the Islamic movements get duped into uh, playing in many ways the the the, the the strategies for this region. I mean, obviously, it's a very important region. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's a region that constantly, it's a heartbeat of the Muslims. 
uh, anytime anything occurs in Masjid Al-Aqsa, uh, people are shaken, people, uh, uh, they want to take whatever they can to go to Masjid Al-Aqsa and do what, you know, to, to support the brothers there and, you know, and the Ummah there. But the, the, the question is, what is missing within the, the movements that they constantly fall trapped to this? To the point, accepting now the new, even the leadership of someone who has killed over a million people. What, what do you think is happening? I mean, I'm sure you, you, you know, because this is new. I mean, for me to, uh, this is a new development. I mean, just recently, I mean, yesterday it was going all over the, uh, in the press. In Lebanon. In Lebanon and all of this. Hassan so, so what is the issue here? Okay. So uh, just to be clear, yeah, Sheikh, our job is not to criticize and, uh, you know, put well, this on is the public, spot. This yeah, is a of public course, issue. Of course. So that's why I'm bringing it up yeah. as a public issue. So inshallah, guys. so we can, we can be productive and influential, yeah. inshallah, and we bring, uh, you know, the Muslims hearts and minds together. <coughs> So our job is not to criticize, uh, you know, brothers and sisters. I mean, it's not our job. Critical. Yes, you, yes. You, you, if you allow me to finish, inshallah. No, I know, but my see, job, my this job is, is we are live, and I have to question yes. you. I put you no. on the spot here. Absolutely. This, this is, these answer. are people who are going I after will some, accepting someone who has killed over probably five hundred thousand. Uh, I will Muslims. answer, inshallah. Go ahead. So uh, my job is to straight to, to draw the straight line next to the crooked one without actually mentioning names. And you know, I give nasiha to the brothers, you know, privately uh, as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And the nasiha is never given in public. You know, in public, it's criticism, and we may have constructive criticism. But unless and it's no open, one, yes, and, and, and no one, and, and, and no one, and no one is is immune from you know receiving any criticism. But the actions that uh, contradict the Quran and Sunnah is always wrong. Hmm. So I hmm. I will not sit down here and accept anybody to defend any action that is not following the Quran and Sunnah. Whether the brother have an excuse, you know, whether it is the mustaha or the, the politics of or the region, you know, everybody uh, abandoned them and, uh, you know, whatever excuse they have, they have to look at the Quran and Sunnah and see if Allah SWT accepts that excuse on the day of judgment or not. It is not just Bashar al-Assad. Mm -hmm. It's all the regimes and the governments sure, who sure. are set up by the kuffar to not only fight Muslims and also make sure and prevent the, the return of the Islamic resurgence and the Khilafah and the Islamic State. They have been set up to prevent the return of Islam, period. So I will not, you know, sit down here and, uh, you know, uh, promote any government or any regime or any leader uh, who has been standing before Islam and made sure that he will lie himself with the kuffar and accept it for himself to be the agent and the tool in which the kuffar and by which the kuffar are implementing their policies on the Muslim land. So having said that, we all know that allying ourselves and allying anybody's self and allying any uh, group or movement with the regime is wrong, period. That This is political suicide, let alone being haram this is on the, a day of judgment. That's what I'm saying. I think, uh, you know, I mean, you went further than what I wanted to say, but I guess the question is that the awareness, like the political awareness that it takes, you know, even to, to, to make uh, leadership, you know, moves as leadership. I mean, they are saying that they are the leadership in the region, yes, or at yes, least they're yes. promoting themselves as that. Now, to, to uh, yani, I guess the question is that <coughs> why such a level of depravity, you know, that we, that we are willing, no, no, I mean, uh, to, to deprive themselves of, to this level that they're willing to shake hands with someone's hand that is still, uh, yani, full of blood. Uh, yeah. Let me just uh, no, simple no. words into this. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to uncover things to the people. Hmm. The people's hmm. eyes cannot be just blind on yes. what's going on. Yes. Whether it's the regimes, yes. whether it's the Islamic movements, or any other movement that puts its hands with the ones who are torturing the Ummah, the ones who are oppressing the Ummah. When this is hid hidden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to expose it. So it's going to open the eyes of the people. Look at what they're doing. They're putting their hands with the ones who have killed thousands and yes. thousands and thousands of the Muslims. Yeah. The ones who have been talking about, you know, freeing Palestine and Al-Quds, we're going to march to Al-Quds yes. for years and years and years, allying them with Iran. Iran that says it's the enemy. It's the enemy. Yeah. It's, it's the enemy. It's the enemy. Yeah. And it's, it's, the, the, it's the shaitan. It's this. <laughs> and the Yahud have bombarded them and, and they did not move a little bit. One move they did not do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to expose that Mm -hmm. to the people so the people can see it in front of their eyes it's not just we, are, we have to be politically aware for the people who are not even politi political thinkers they can see it in the front of their eyes that okay 
Hassan Nasrallah was killing the people, the Muslims. My, you, my brother, your brothers, who are in the Aqeedah. Yes. They are my brothers in Asham. Yeah. They are my brothers in Asham. They are my brothers in Lebanon. Yeah. He's been killing them. And now I am in the name of Islam. I'm going there. I'm putting my hands in his hands. I'm looking for his support. Allah is going to expose that for the people to know where is the haqq and where is the battle. It has so, to be exposed to the people. It cannot be just let that left like this. If you allow me, Sheikh. Uh, go, go ahead. Inshallah, we just give nasiha, you know, out of this, you know, from this mic and this stage. We give nasiha to our brothers and sisters, you know. Yes, the, the, the Arabs and the Muslims and everybody may have abandoned the issue of uh, Muslims in Palestine or especially in Gaza. But, you know, brothers, uh, we put our hand and our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the best of the helpers. So we look for that which is pleasing to him, and we do it, we engage in it, and we make sure that we are part of it. And anything that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we stay away from it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barak in our times, in our efforts, in our jihad, uh, in our struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us victorious and will give us, uh, inshallah, support and victory. Not the kuffar, not their regimes, not their agents. So inshallah, if, if the brothers allow us to, you know, if you want to call that criticism, inshallah, it is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allow us to give you a nasih, inshallah. Uh, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the best in this life, inshallah, in the next life. Uh, go ahead. You have yeah, 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 I have to add something, some, which is, uh, we have yani to we have it's, a lot the, to it's not the Arab and the Muslims who have been, it's the regimes. Okay, no, no, hold on. Let me ask you something. And that's where, go ahead, go one, ahead. I have one, my, one statement sure. the Sheikh Taqeed Dina Nabahani mentioned, yeah. mentioned. He says, Israel hiya dhullu al-andima, wa indama tazul al-andima yazul dhulluha. Israel is the shadow of the regimes. And when the regimes go, the shadow is going to go away. This is political awareness of who is actually protecting that entity there and making it secure and making it last and, and, and expanding and all of that. It's these regimes. It's not the people. It's the regime. And when you are getting rid of these regimes and bringing back Islam, so all Muslims are united, it's just a matter of time. It's nothing. There is, a, you know, uh a little bit about Israel itself. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, a lot of people, they, uh, you know, when they're discussing this issue here, you know, they're always kind of thinking that Israel is the one that is playing the game. It's, it's, it's to the point that people are naive enough to even think that it's Israel that's telling the U.S. what to do and all kinds of stuff. You know, if, you, uh, if you're following these events, let's say even from 1935 till to, to, to today, right, 48, 35, 65, 75, 50, all of these uh, times that we kept on going, you know, you, you see that the, the, the Americans have always kept Israel at bay, meaning that they've always kept them uh, confined to a certain region, no matter what, even if they tried to move forward a little bit here and there, whether it was through Egypt or, you know, other areas. I guess the question is, can you expound on the reality of Israel as a state and the, the reality of who is making the moves, who is moving the pawns? in the region so that it's open for the people to say that it's not I mean is it Israel is it that powerful is it undefeatable is it something that had defeated the Arabs and such and such you see you, you've seen the whole narrative right oh they've defeated in 1965 or oh, right? it's gone they, they cannot so if you you know both of you if you can take a little bit time of discussing this a little bit from the regional perspective meaning who is moving the game who's making it happen and what is this, uh, the, 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 the future look like from the political issues today? <coughs> so number one, uh, let's agree on one fact. Uh, whether uh, it is the Jewish state, call it so-called Israel, or it is the uh, United Nations, or it is any other nation or state, these are all tools of the kuffar. We know the struggle has always uh, been... We understand who is the kuffar, who is the I, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming to the point. Just to make sure that we're all on the same yeah. page. And also, inshallah, our respected audience. So the struggle is always between the truth and the falsehood. So there's the truth, there's the haq, and there's the bottle. So the struggle is always between the haq and the bottle. So the haq has only one tool, the Muslims, and by what Allah subhanahu wa has revealed unto them. Uh, and the bottle has many tools. No, the bottle in the past has its own attributes and has its own tools. Now it has different tools. But it is kufr. So the kufr and its systems are on one uh, uh, camp, and Islam and Muslims should be on the other camp. But to be uh, more politically aware and to be uh, uh, understanding of the situation, the U.S. today 
is the one who's uh, really uh, you know the the super state that is controlling the uh, the uh, political uh, uh, you know stance in the world. So before that, it was actually Britain, uh, you know, called Europe or France. So when uh, the Jewish state was established, it was established, as the brother said, and you guys said before, uh, to be the, the, the spearhead, the, 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 the frontier mm. that will fight, you know, Islam and Muslims, not today, not yesterday. This is all, you know, fake, just, uh, you know, it's actually prepared when Islam returns. This is their front uh, advanced head that will fight and battle uh, Islam when Islam comes back. So they implanted and they established the Jewish state to fight Islam and Muslims when Islam returns. But meantime, there is going to be some little battles here and there. So the ones who established the, the Jewish state uh, the was British, Europe. The British. And it, and exactly. I, look, and they it, said, yes, it, imagine it was Imagine you're talking Europe. to people who have no idea. Of it, what was, it was Britain. So Britain that established it. It was Britain. Okay. Uh, and the purpose for that was to be the front line that will uh, fight and struggle with Islam and Islam returns. Now, uh, uh, after the Second World War, America took the banner and it was the, the uh, one that was co controlling the, the world uh, arena. Uh, so now America is the one who is supporting. And by the way, uh, Sharon, uh, the, the Prime Minister, the famous Prime Minister, or the, I shouldn't say famous, the infamous uh, Prime Minister <laughs> of, of the Jewish state, he said that the West has established the Jewish state and it is their responsibility to support it. Mm. This is 1999 slash 2000. I don't know exactly which year. He said that uh, it was the, the European... Right before the second intifada. Exactly. Yes. It was, he said it was the European countries, the West, who had established uh, Israel, and it is their responsibility to support it. Why? Because they... And he said also in the same article, he said Israel is a cheap agent. And he, he drew a, conc uh, a comparison. He said if America was to move uh, an airplane carrier to the region, it would cost uh, America almost $12 billion a year. They give almost $10 billion a year or, or $4 billion a year of aid to Israel. So he said Israel is a cheap agent because they know their role is an agent to protect and support and secure the Western interest in the region if and when Islam you know, returns, inshallah, may Allah make him feel. So to, to move one airplane carrier would be more expensive than supporting the Jewish state. So the one who supports the Jewish state is the one who established it for that reason. It was Europe, still Europe, and America, and the West in general. And all the Kufr states, you know, to be actually accurate. So where do they stand? They actually stand in the middle. So the, 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 the Jews do have impact and influence in the uh, American politics, but they're not all the way up on the top. They are somewhere in the middle. They have influence. They affect the politicians. They affect the, the voting uh, you know, uh, 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 process and, and uh, you know, uh, elections, but they're not the ones who uh, draw policies. They, they're not the ones who decide which are the strategic, you know, if you want goals and objectives for America. Uh, they're actually uh, a tool that is being used by America. And when America wants something to, to happen, uh, they will make sure that Israel is part of that to achieve their strategic goals <coughs> and objectives in the region. In the region. Uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf, uh, you know, I before this uh, interview, I was looking at some of the fatwa that were passed in 1935 from Azhar at that time, then Iraq, then the National uh, Ulama Council in India, then uh, someone in Morocco, all of the ulama from all over, even uh, scholars of Najd, scholars of... Mm -hmm. And there was, a say, the, the, every single uh, uh, entity from the, you know, uh, the scholarship, uh, Every single entity was very clear what the solution is when it comes to Palestine. If you can, I, I know it's a very long question, but from that time to today, when we are looking at the scholars, of, when they are speaking from the platform, you know, whether it's Azhar today and then, what do you think happened? Uh, you know, did the usul fiqh change? Did uh, the Quran change? What happened? that you have ulama today from the same schools, reading the same books, ha, uh, facing the same problem, have completely changed their sorry, narrative. Sorry, sorry. Uh, that's true. So the Quran did not change. Of course. No, no I, I would say this is true. Usul al did not change. Yes. And what especially because I, I, I was... Yeah, yeah, I, 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 what, what, what have changed is, remember what we talked about? We talked about, okay, that we created nation states. 
Right. Ne- and no, 1935 right. was there. I mean, you have 1935 was uh, it was divided. It, it was, was divided. Fresh, it was least. a beginning. Yes. But still, at that time, you yes. have the scholars. The yes. scholars who were still uh, scholars. some of the scholars who were still scholars yes. who fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will yes. look for solution. They look for solution from Islam. Now, fast forward, eight years, mm. 90 years, mm. the work of the kuffar, whether it's America, Britain, France, and their agents and the Muslims on secularization of the Muslim mind. On I am Jordanian, I only care about Jordan. Mm. And when I look for solution, I look for a solution so in the even Jordanian, scholars in the Jordanian constitution. It's scholars with time, you're talking about 90 years. Mm. This will have an impact. This will have an impact. The, the whole world, the whole world is going and focusing on the education system in the Muslim world. Changing mm. the education system in the Muslim world. Yeah, that's very and this is and this is not just for the scholars only. Yes, yes. It's not for the scholars only. This is for anyone the who's four, five years old, three years old. I want to change the way he's get educated. An example in Jordan just last week, the Mufti mm. in Jordan comes and says, "I will stop any." one who is five years old from memorizing the Quran and going to the Quran yes. because five years old boy should be in the Rawda, in the KG, should be learning something else but not memorizing the Quran. These are the Mufti, these are the scholars that are today. They're, they're some of them, not all, some of them, they're being used like that, to do that. The West, Tony Blair, just if you go back just about uh, after the the uh, the uh, Gulf Force after September 11. He said, we need to put all the world resources in order to counter-attack the Islamic ideology. Hmm. And what's Islamic ideology? It's about getting a solution to a problem from the sources, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Wahi, from the Quran, from the Sunnah. This is what it is. So if you go and put all your resources to go and change that and create scholars in the Muslim land, in the Muslim land, there are some mashayikh, and this was on the TV just last year, some of the mashayikh in the Muslim land who've been actually taught and trained by non-Muslims. Mm. Yes. By non-Muslims. Yeah, corporations so what do you stuff. expect from one who has been trained and taught by non-Muslims? Do you think he will be going back to the Quran and the Sunnah and Ijma' al-Sahaba and Qiyas when he's looking for a solution to the problem of Masjid al-Aqsa or any other problem? Or he will be saying the constitution mm. is the way to go. The United ah, Nations is the way to go. Yeah. So it's about how how we have been educated, and that's why the education is very important. When I am when I teach, when I teach kids, when I teach students, when I teach them, I need to teach them what pleases Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Mm. What mm. pleases Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, so they are aware of it, and they need to know if they deviate from it, then Allah is going to expose them in this dunya. If not, the punishment in the akhirah is severe. You know, uh, this is. May, may I add something? You can. You add, no, no. There's too much to cover. You can add to the answer that I'm sure. giving. Um, uh, I don't know if you remember when uh, Yahya Yash was killed. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, sure. I'm sure you were there actually. Yeah. Uh, when he was killed, there was a statement that was that came out from Sharon. I think it was Perez. I think at that time he was. He said a statement. He said, "I thank God that it wasn't us." And, you know, when I read that statement, it was so, and it had an impact on me that, you know, he's saying that I thank God it wasn't us who did the killing. Can you, you know, it's like almost, uh, you know, if you want to go to the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, their own brothers come and they make it look like uh, the crime is, uh, you, you, you know, the whole story. here. And then he says it's funny that the, the, that the wolf attacks from the front and, the, you know, the whole story there. What has been the role of the Muslims, Benny, you think? I'm not here talking about movements and none of that. What have we done? You know, how much are we ourselves part of this crime uh, by not teaching our children what is Masjid Aqsa? Where is Masjid Aqsa? I mean, if you go to the average Muslims anywhere in the world, other than, let's say, Palestine, they don't know what even Masjid Aqsa looks like. They don't know where, they can't point it to, to Palestine. They can't, they don't know who Umar ibn Khattab is. They don't know what Umar treaty was. They don't know. So can you, you see, I mean, it's like we killed Yahya Yash. And they were happy about that, that we killed. Because we cannot, it seems like, we, we, you know, that whole 
era is gone. Can you bring that a little bit and you shed light on this? Inshallah. But uh, let me just shed some light uh, for 20 seconds on the previous question. Yeah, yeah, what happened ahead. to the uh, jurisdiction in Islam and scholars and all of that? So what happened actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Innama yakhshi Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. So indeed, the one who fears Allah out of his servants are the scholars, ulama. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already specified uh, and confined confined this is a condition it, mm. it's not the other way around so if the ulama do not fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they're not ulama. Mm -hmm. so if we see them fearing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and going you know in their understanding in their deduction in their fatwas call it which is not really the best thing if they go along with what pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say what pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they also expose what displeases us then we say these are ulama but if we see their actions and their statements and their uh, deduction Actually, displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are not ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say they are the, he didn't say they are ulama. So just to make sure these so-called, we call them so-called ulama, these are made by the, and designed by the kuffar, and designed by the regimes to support and give legitimacy to the actions of, of kuffar. But uh, back to your question, actually two points. Point number one, uh, yes, the one who implanted the uh, explosives to you of know, course, this is similar. I don't want yes. to think that I'm yes. saying that. No, yeah, of course, I know. Course. Is is uh, his cousin? Yes. And it wasn't really for much, uh, you know, money. It was for and that was the trivial. amazing. That, that was the shocking part. Absolutely. It was somebody from his old family. Yes. That. Uh, so, uh, but again, that's point number one. The one who was behind it, the one who planned it, the one who made sure it happened, the one who worked on it for many years was, of course, of course so the one who actually assassinated Yahya Ayyash and all the sincere Muslims and all the ones who have been assassinated you know, you can start as back as you want all the way until today, is basically the Jewish state and their allies and their agents but uh, let's make sure uh, we do not blame no, no, uh, look, I, I want to emphasize the question again, the, the thing of uh, me putting it that way is that, you know the statement that 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 he made was thank god we didn't do it mm -hmm. meaning that at the end he of was day, afraid of the uh, but at the end of the, the day it is your people mm -hmm. who work with us to do it absolutely yes so coming to this the, so the thing is i get what i'm trying to of course many people many youth unfortunately will not even know who yahya yash is mm -hmm. and who the, the engineer was and all of that the whole books written on him and i wish somebody there's a very good book written on him uh, in english called the engineer uh, people should read it but the the Today's situation with this ummah, with the youth of this ummah, with the awareness, and what we are facing versus, yani, did we do justice to bring that awareness of this land to the Muslims, let whether they are Arab or yes. non-Arab? Yeah. Let, let, me, let me be accurate and also explanatory at the same time. So again, I am not going to uh, blame the victim. Uh, the Muslims in Palestine are victims. And everything that happens to them and on them uh, they've been victimized. So whether it is poverty or uh, uh, infiltration or sure. indoctrination or uh, all of that, so they have been forced to do, and again, I'm not excusing their actions. What is haram is haram, period. Uh, you know, the, the old uh, poetry saying, uh, not poetry, the old famous saying, even before Islam, it says, So uh, a, free, a free woman would be hungry, would die out of hunger, and she would not eat out of her breasts. In other words, she would not sell her honor. So a Muslim should not sell his honor, should not sell his brother, should not sell his deen, should not sell his people. We agree on that. So I'm not excusing or legitimizing any of these actions, but we have to put it in context. Oh, sure, sure. We want to make sure that the Muslims in Palestine are being tortured, colonized, occupied, victimized, uh, uh, been forced into poverty, been forced into so many things, which leads to such actions, and these actions are haram. So we do have parts to do, uh, and we are to blame also uh, to a certain extent, but let's make sure that we don't take it out of context. Yes, there are unfortunately many agents in the Muslims or among the Muslims in Palestine they, who work with the Kuffar, work with the Yehud, like we do have a lot of Muslims who work here with the government and as spies on the Muslims, they choose to do this. They're still Muslims, they're doing something that is a grave sin. We have to address them, we have to talk to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them guidance and stop doing that. Uh, but we have to put it in context, in, toxic, in, in, in context of indoctrination, of colonization, of poverty, of occupation, and all of that. These actions are not to be legitimized. They, they are very wrong actions, and they will have to deal with the consequences on the Day of Judgment, which is very, very look, severe. Look, look I, I think you made that point clear, but the question remains, have we done justice to this generation 
where they understand the the importance of this land. You, you see what I'm no, saying is that that's of see, if you can it, it, if any one of you can address that specific issue. I, I'm I, I'm not I would say I'm you know we are not blaming the victim. I'm not playing that game. I'm saying is that till today, till <coughs> today, bombing is happening as we speak in Gaza. Yeah. Day before yesterday, last two days, mm -hmm. three days, mm -hmm. it's been happening. Mm -hmm. Who here, other than us, and maybe, of course, Muslims are seeing, but it's been, it's under the, oh, I understand, Gaza, what, what, 50 years, 100 years, whatever the issue, 60 years. So, what you think we should do, should be done, just in a minute, because we have a few other yeah. points that we need to discuss. Anyone here, what should be done in our families, in our communities, within this ummah? As activists, as people who are actively involved in 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 in, uh, in creating a narrative within this ummah, you know, and we, we have to adopt carriers. very quickly. Yes. We have to adopt every single Muslim issue as much as we can and connect it to the right and sound solution all the time. So we have to be engaging with the people. We we should not leave and and let, let any chance go by without utilizing that and making sure that we speak about it in the proper context and connect it to its reality and its proper solution. So again, anyone who is active and should be active, anyone who is not active should be active. But to, just to make sure that, uh, again, you don't hear that in the news, there is no mainstream media, you know, is going to talk about it. You're not allowed to, to speak about it, you know, unfortunately, because this is systematic where uh, uh, such such events and such information should not be dissipated among the Muslims and talked about it. L let me uh, go ahead to it. 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 Whatever you see torture or oppression or oppression on the Muslims, that's that's a munkar. That's a munkar. Within my family, within my sphere of influence, I need to talk about it. I need to talk about it. The first type, which is if I have, if I if I can change it with my hand, that requires power. I don't have the power to go and change it. The situation in Palestine, the situation in Kashmir, the situation in most of the Muslim land where there is oppression. But I can speak about it. I can talk about it. And awareness through education, awareness about through discussing it, like the program that you have right now within our families, talking about it so they know what Palestine is, they know what Kashmir is, they know what the issue is, and what the correct solution to it. And they also need to know that they need to speak up about it because if they don't speak about it, then they're not enjoying good them forbidding evil. There is a, you know, there's a statement that says the regimes employ media in four ways. Just discuss it in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, it says enhancing credibility for the regime's policies and opinions in an overt way. That's one of the things that they do. Second, to appear as if looking after the interest of the Muslims. Number two. Number three, creating diversions away from the regime's inherent corruption and number th uh, four to dismantle any opposition and number five enhancing credibility this is what they do whenever the role of the media in order to either give credibility to the to the regimes that they are part of them themselves so from what you just heard Yani, what is the responsibility of the media we talked about muslims we talked about us as parents let's say as community people who carry the da'wah to the uh, look far into the muslims uh, uh, what is the role of the media you know being the tongue of in some ways the rulers to discuss this matter or to bring these issues of the muslims so the um, the media the media should be the voice of the haq and voice of the truth exactly. that's what should be the media Mm. And it should be saying the haqq and saying the truth and exposing anything that's bad. That's what should be the, the, the rule of media. But now when the media is controlled by a government, and a government has a policy, a government has a plan. Mm. A, when the government has a plan that, hey, this is, I am a nation state, I will only take care of the issues internally that are related to me, and might take care of the issues that are related to my people, depending on what the situation is. And I will use that media to go and do that. Take, for example, Jordan. The Jordan, when it comes to the issue of, of Al-Quds, mm. when it comes to the issue of Al-Quds and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the, uh, the king is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what they call him the, uh, in English, the... Sayyid uh, Al-Arabi. Uh, Hamil Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, or Ra'i. He's the, he's the, uh, protect, the, protect, the, the guardian, the of guardian of, yeah. of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Yeah. And you play that yeah. in all the conferences and in the media, in the Jordanian media. And you will have pictures for him and all of that. This is part of what you just read. 
Mm. Okay. Yeah, he's addressing the old world. Yeah, he's he's the show that yes, he's here. he's he's mm. he's paying for there. He's taking care of the masjid, cleaning it, making sure that everything and and when the Yahud go and do the something, he goes and and talks, backs, whatever it is. So they show things that he's doing something. They show, but that's the way that the government wants them to show. It's a cleaning for him and others too. In Pakistan. Mm. Same thing oh, at, the time of of Imran Khan. I, I, at the time of Imran Khan. That's same. a discussion Absolutely. It's, itself, it's, it's, it's <laughs> the same thing. So it's a tool that's used the way that the government wants. And if you the, the go deviate, way, you know, the way and if the you Madina. deviate, you're closed. Yeah. The next day you're closed if you deviate from their, from their goal. Because that's what they want. They don't want you to go and talk. The issue of Masjid al-Aqsa is an Islamic issue. The issue, the issue of the Masjid al-Aqsa is, is dear to the hearts of every Muslim. Mm. They don't want you to hear that. They want you to say that the issue of Masjid al-Aqsa is a Palestinian issue and we have to go and resolve it through peace talks and through United Nations and through Arab League, through whatever this means. But don't mention Islam. Go and visit Masjid al-Aqsa and pray. Mm. Mm. But don't talk about what the real solution is. Mm. That's their role. Uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, this is, uh, again, uh, one of you, uh, they mentioned, actually I think you were mentioning that, uh, you know, even many times Muslims in the U.S., sometimes organizations, are playing a very vital role in actually extending the American foreign policy. Uh, that includes whether it's the issue of Palestine or any other. Uh, maybe you've heard that, uh, for instance, ISNA, it, but uh, there, there is a discussion going on, and I don't know how true it is, at least from what I'm hearing from the ulama, is that they want to bring Modi to the convention so they can, he can speak to the Muslims. Now, yani, we all know what's happening. I mean, we can connect it to what's happening in, in this area, but we all know what's happening to the masajid in India, the bulldozing of the masajid, the bulldozing of the Muslim homes, the, the 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 making fun of of, of the Muslims and uh, you know and the character of the Prophet Sallallahu and his wife uh, I mean, all of these things that these people are doing, but to bring somebody like this, a head of a state like this, and to to allow him to speak to the Muslims, what do you think the Muslims <coughs> in the West? Yani, uh, what, what do you have to say about such even moves? I mean, because I think we have to be able to speak about these issues. I mean, this is a very big move mm -hmm. uh, for an organization to make, uh, to bring and uh, clear an open enemy. Clear an open enemy. Somebody who's openly upset what, what they say about Islam and the Muslims and the Prophet and, and Prophets of Islam. Mm -hmm. If you can... Uh, so for, for, I, I, yes, for any organization or for any mm -hmm. people, I'm talking about Muslims or, or, or uh, whether it is... No, whether they're good or not is not the issue, but this I've heard very clearly yes. from very... Uh, for, for, for anybody yeah. to, to uh, engage in anything like that, whether it is putting their hands, you know, with the hands of a Trump... Uh, I mean, Iqnabad Erdogan, for instance. I, I, I was going to mention, go I was going to mention, if you remember, the, yeah. I gave the khutbah last year in Ramadan, uh, the after, you know, effects of the issues in, in Palestine, well, there wasn't a single uh, brother in the masjid who didn't come say Jazakallah khair for, you know, so when, when you draw the straight line next to the crooked one and you point out uh, and you expose the, such regimes and rulers hmm. and leaders in the right manner, in the right way, in context, nobody will have any problem with you. So, uh, you know, out of this, you know, member, we, we're sending this message that anybody, he does not have to be moody. He doesn't have to be the one who's in charge of a regime that is criticizing and ridiculing and, and mocking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anybody who is not taking care of the affairs of the Muslims in a, in a proper manner, the one who is, uh, uh, in, you know, uh, incarcerating and jailing and, you know, oppressing the Muslims and ruling by what, that which the shaitan approves and not what that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has revealed is something that we don't accept. So whether it is Moody, Erdogan, the Jordanian king, the Palestinian, whatever, it doesn't matter who they bring. We should, uh, you know, say out loud that we have given up on all of them. It should be a long time ago, and we should not engage with them. We should not give hands to them. We should not support them in any way, in any manner. And by the way, the one who accepts, uh, again, as I said, Trump, who is the head of the of the Kufr state, which declared war against Islam and Muslims for no, a long but, time. But but look, Sheikh, here, look, you know, for instance, I I'm supposed to get a haircut. Okay, the local guy that's closest to me is someone, he's Hindu. 
just because what's happening back home, my heart does not allow me you don't to go, go to and him. spend one penny with him. You go I, I'm, a Muslim. Muslim, I'm just like, I'm not even going to do that. Now, you yeah. could have a whole argument, look, but I'm saying, you, I, I, I can't do that. Look what they said about the Prophet ﷺ. Look what they're saying about Aisha Delana. Look what they're saying to the Muslims. And how, how is it that this is the, the, in the hearts of the Muslims, mm -hmm. the general masses, it's, they're burning. But at the same time, organizations that present them are able to do what you know the kind of garbage that they're presenting to the Muslim Ummah. Is it is there a disconnect? Put it straightforward. Yeah. Uh, Modi is the president of India, right? Yes. Or the prime minister of, yeah. of India. Yeah. And uh, Muslims live in India. Yes. And uh, Isna, Ikna, yeah. whatever, all these, yeah. there are Indian Muslims who yeah. are part of this. So yeah, it's their, it's their, it's their president. Yeah. Oh. It's their president. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're inviting their president, their president yeah. to the... I see. To the, to the conference. So to the conference. I guess again, you, again, you, you're addressing the decline. That's national, and that's, the, that's okay, what I'm saying. Okay, so that's, that's what I wanted you to do. That's what the nation okay. state, when you start secularizing yes, Muslim yes, mind, yes, and you're focusing, yes, I am Indian. Yes, yes. I am no so more, I'm not, Muslim sure. is not right. my first. I right. am Indian. I am right. Jordanian. I right. am not Arab. Forget yes. Arab. I am Jordanian. Yes. I am. When you focus on that, then, okay, inviting, inviting, inviting the president of India, and he wants to correct what he has done. Yes. What's wrong with that? Yes, yes. That's how they look at it. That's What's how they look at it. That's but exactly my what advice, the... From this, from this venue here, yeah. my advice to Isna, don't do it. Yes. That's a damage, complete damage yeah. to the Muslims and to the Muslim emotions here that you are trying to go and gain back. Yes. Yes. Don't do it. Yeah. I mean, this I, is I not the right step. This is not the right thing to do. Mm. Same thing with, you know, with Mass and Ikna when they invited Erdogan. Mm. Erdogan was... was no, I guess, you know, what, what I'm saying is that, I mean, uh, I guess the, you know, the influence also, on the other hand, if you can, mm. any one of you can actually talk about the influence that we have. I mean, do we have an influence as Muslims living in the West in the strategic policy making uh, in the East? I mean, are we, like, the programs that we are doing, what we are speaking, I mean, it's very obvious that organizations in the West are able to bring such personalities, presidents and prime ministers of countries, mm -hmm. to their platforms. So obviously there is something that's there that they think by manipulating maybe the public opinion of the Muslims here in the West, they can also manipulate the, the, the issue on the ground. Am I correct in that or do you think that's right? Bismillah ar rahim wa mathalu kalimatin tayyibatin ka shajaratin tayyibatin asluha thabitun wa fara'uha fi sinna. And also the other examples wa mathalu, so they, I'm going to translate. So the example of a good word is like the example of a good tree. Its base is very deep in the ground and its branches are very high in the sky. And the example of a bad word is the example of a bad tree. So do not minimize anything you say on any member. The Prophet Asalaam started in Mecca alone. In Mecca, on the margin of history, the Arabs were on the margin of history. They had no mentioning, they had no recognition. And the Prophet ﷺ, by the will and decree of Allah ﷻ, as well as the support Allah gave him, uh, had changed the face of the earth uh, until the Day of Judgment, sure. uh, and so on and so forth. So do not minimize anything you do or say. But uh, if we don't have an impact, we should create one. Hmm. We have the capacity, we have hmm. the power to make an impact, to create an impact, to change, and, and, and you know, swiftly, change the direction of the Muslims' thought and ideas and, and, and uh, 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 towards w that which pleases Allah SWT. So if we don't have an impact, we should make one. Whether, you know, groups, individuals, uh, associations, so we, we have, every one of us is, is, uh, is, an, is guarding, uh, if you want, uh, a, a, a door, and each one is going to be uh, asked about that responsibility. So if I don't have an impact, I have to make one, inshallah. Uh, let's go to the questions. Uh, Let's put up the questions. If not, I have a few other questions I want to ask. Uh, this is from Abdul Rahman. Uh, could any of the speakers go more in depth about the claim that the Arab Muslims in Palestine and the Hejaz believed another state ruled by Islam would be established after the revolt against Armenians? Uh, sorry, can, can, can you, can you put that the question again? So I think the question is referring to the Arab revolt the against Arab, Uthman yeah. Khilafah. They actually did not promise them, uh, they, they promised them when they destroy, uh, actually this is what happened in, con in context of history, uh, yes, the Uthman Khilafah was not 
the best that implemented Islam and took care of the Muslim issues, not just the Arab issues, the Muslim issues in general, because it was weak at the end. The Kuffar took that particular minute detail and elaborated and enlarged it so much, and they created around that a momentum from the, the, the deviant Arab and call him the, the agent Arab who accepted to stab the Khilafah on its back. Uh, and now this is, this is understood by even uh, you know, the children of the Arab, uh, you know, the Muslims Arab. So the, they stabbed the Islamic Khilafah, the Uthmani Khilafah in the back, thinking that uh, they're going to establish an Arab state. Uh, but they actually, they knew that their role was to be the agents of the Kuffar to destroy the Khilafah. So it wasn't really, they did not believe that they could establish a state in the Hejaz and in the Arab. This is what is being sold to us. They knew they were agents to the Kuffar, but they brought him in by, by uh, a fancy idea that you are the Arab mm. uh, and you have to have your own state and you have to, uh, but ultimately they were agents and you, they knew they were agents and nothing happened after they destroyed the Khilafah. They did not give him any state. They did not establish anything for them. They were just Rather there they agents. Them. Exactly. Yes. Uh, next question. Uh, is it only a Muslim issue? What about the people who say that all religions have a right on this place? Well, it's the, uh, the issue of Masjid Al-Aqsa and the Blessed Land. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 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 subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a blessed land. It right? doesn't matter who lives there. It doesn't matter who lives there. Uh, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, in the incident of Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj, he led the salah with all, he was leading the salah, and behind him all the prophets. Mm. All mm -hmm. the prophets are behind him. When the Prophet Sallallahu was praying in the beginning, he was praying towards Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So this is the Qibla, the first Qibla of the Muslimin. This is the place where the Prophet Sallallahu led all the prophets in the Salah. So it's as if since the, the, this land has been transferred its ownership and authority to the Muslims. And that's what Al-Uhd al umariya when Umar bin Khattab, when it was, when the Al-Masjid, when, when Al-Quds was conquered and opened at the hands of Umar bin Khattab and he gave the Uhda, uh, the, to the treaty that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Muslims, non-Muslims, uh, Christians, Jews, they will live there and they will enjoy their religious rights, but they will be ruled by Islam. What do you have? And to that's a ruling, and that's where it comes to rule. Sure. When it comes to ruling, this land, because it's ruled by Islam, it becomes part of something called Darul Islam, the land of Islam. And the land of Islam is a Shari'i definition for it, which is the land that where Islam is implemented and its security and by Islam. So it became part of the land of Islam. So any land that's annexed to the Darul Islam and the land of Islam becomes part of Islam and becomes a land of Islam. And if it's lost, it has to be bring back again, back bring, back. bring back to the Islam. So it's ruled by, and because Islam is the last religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted to us, to all humanity. This is... Can, uh, can I just add very quick? Uh, sure. So everybody and anybody is welcome to defend the Holy Land and uh, make sure that the illegal occupation is removed. So whether they're Christians or Jews, actually I remember my, uh, my uh, grandmother's uh, brother who lived over 100 years, he told me that his best neighbor best friend uh, was a neighbor who was a Jew uh, and uh, they were fighting alongside the, the, the uh, Zionist uh, organizations who came to threaten and take over the land so they nobody had any problem with uh, anybody fighting to defend let, the land let me, let me whether they're Muslims or non-Muslims as you know uh, with the whole situation that took place with the journalist I think mm -hmm. her name was Shaheen yes. uh, Shireen, Shireen, I think. Shireen. Shireen. The, the why is it that you know I mean, is it that the Muslims think that, you know, finally maybe we can get our voice out of what this occupation is about? Because when a non-Muslim, let's say uh, someone like this is killed, a journalist killed, they, they feel so, uh, yani, if their own lives, it does not have any value. But this one has, has value. I mean, you, you see yes. what's going on here? So, uh, just to say that many innocent people are being killed every day, whether they're Muslims and or non-Muslims, young or exactly. just, uh, So, the, no big deal was made except uh, this For this time. one? Yeah, because we know Al Jazeera TV, you know, is unfortunately has European and it, this is uh, the BBC, so this is uh, British. And they're exposing uh, the Yehud all, all along and they're exposing the Americans' plots and plans 
all along. So they, not because they're so patriotic and not because they stand in solidarity with anybody who's killed in Palestine, yet even though they use Palestine issue to actually gain some political gain and, and uh, you know, gather, but they, they, they're, using, they're using this situation not because there is an innocent person who's been killed. Yes, an innocent person who's been killed. We don't minimize that. Mm -hmm. uh, even though she's not a Muslim. But they're you using know, this as a political strategy. Exactly. Too. So How do you, how and do you study that? And that's where we am Kuruna, we am Kuruna, There are a lot of discussions after this incident about whether, whether she will, she's considered a shahida, and yes. as a Muslim, as a Muslim, should I be saying rahma? May Allah subhanahu wa taala have mercy. So there, I mean, and there yeah. were a lot of people who yeah. were exposed, exposed yeah. by this, which is from yeah. what so-called ulama. ulama. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of people who have learned from the Muslim, learned the basics of that this is okay. Yes, he's still yes. She's uh, she's patriotic. She was she was uh, uh, broadcasting and what's going on in Palestine and talking about it as part of her job. But at the same time, as a Muslim, I am Muslim, I, will, I cannot say the word of Rahman. Therefore, someone who is not one, once he dies, once he dies. So there is people who have learned and people have been exposed. And that's the makrib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from an incident like this. Sure, what is the, what is the uh, just because you, know, you mentioned Al Jazeera, and that's a skill to have, to be able to see uh, when networks are presenting, like you're talking about the role of media yes. here, and you, you just presented that, that how, what skill should one have? to be able to see the plots and plans of even networks to say that if BBC is saying something or Jazeera is saying something versus CNN is saying something, Le Monde is saying something, you know, Monitor is saying something, how do you, how can you, uh, you know, you know, decipher, it's how can very, you go through this? Very, I'm sorry, it's very, very quick. If Trump gave up already on the mainstream media, why should a Muslim, you know, still believe in a man? No, no, I'm not saying All that, but I'm saying from, media, from, yes. from, 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 from Active yeah. dawa carrier, yes, who's somebody absolutely. who wants yes. to present the points. Yes. How is uh, what skill do I need? What do I do in order to be able to see through the media? So all, all all media all media I'm sorry all media outlets doesn't matter who all media outlets who are allowed to work freely in public and they're promoting any system doesn't matter which system whether it is the the Qatari system or it is the Erdogan system or the Egyptian system doesn't matter regime. If they are promoting already and they're pro any government, they're already burnt. So just throw them in the garbage. But any uh, outlet and any media that is being fought and, and being uh, surrounded by uh, sanctions and difficulties or whatever, they might be sincere and actually we, we should contact them and talk to them. But if you're talking about skills, you have to be politically mature. We have many books, mm -hmm. you know, in Hezbollah Tahrir, we address that. We have political issues, we have political concepts, uh, uh, we have political thoughts. That teach and train, you know, brothers, uh, you know, as as um, members of the group, and also the masses, of how to think along these lines and be able to distinguish which one is connected to what and how and who, who uh, to be able to realize, you know, and read between the lines and behind the scenes. Go ahead. So it uh, needs knowledge, hmm. knowledge in Islam, hmm. because that's the basis. That's our hmm. reference. Hmm. It needs the continuous. Uh, ideologically reading. based. I, ideologically based. Because, because a lot that's, of people have knowledge. That, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I just, uh, we had the ulama that yes, came here. That's what I meant. And I was talking about uh, some issue. They had no idea what was happening. Ulama, 26 of them. That, that's what I meant. It's the ideological. It's, it's, when we're talking here about Islam, in this podium we're talking about Islam, so I need to have that ideological basis in Islam, mm -hmm. where I can distinguish between the haq and batal from an Islamic perspective. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. Second, I need to, to continue. I need to look at the world arena. Look at the politics. Who's in control? What's going on? I need to go and analyze that. Read, read between the lines. Mm. Continuously following up with the events. Not just from one source. I will not focus only on Al Jazeera or Al Arabiya or CNN. I will be reading from multiple sources, multiple news medias. And then we'll be analyzing and taking and linking things together. Mm. That's needed. this continuous follow up is very, is very important. It's time consuming. But that's if you need Something to go that on. That needs to be done. That needs to be done because okay. being a politician Five is required. Question. Uh, any other questions? If there's no. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, finally, because of five minutes here, the issue of revival. I mean, at the end of the day, we are having this discussion uh, to uh, address the Muslims, to address the world in many ways. What is revival? And how is understanding the, uh, the, 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 the the situation or understanding the uh, what Masjid Al-Aqsa is, the role that it plays, 
as within the Muslim context, understanding this, how does that aid the work of reviving this? And this is for both of you. Can inshallah, uh, I will be very brief. Inshallah. So number one, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us the aqidah for a specific goal and objective. Allah did not give us the aqidah to say that we're Muslims and La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah will make us enter into the circle of Islam and then exiting from that is violating that. Th that has consequences and for for a reason. So the foundation, this is the foundation, this is the basis, this is the intellectual leadership, this is uh, uh, the basis upon which I should build every concept and every idea, every you know thought must be based on the Aqidah. So if we look at, uh, if we have this foundation built and we view the issues and we view our interests and if you, if you view anything that you're going to judge and look at and, and do in this life based on the Aqidah, then a revolution happens here. Mm -hmm. So to begin with, revival happens when that foundation is established. So the first and the very beginning is to make sure that the Aqidah is taken as a foundation for every judgment, for every action, for every idea, for every thought, for every concept, for every conviction, for every measure we use for our actions in this life. The revival happens in the action. So the foundation is the Aqidah, which is the fundamental basis. It's an intellectual basis. And then the revival happens in the action. Once we have adopted the Aqidah, then our action should be reflected based on this aqidah. Anything and everything that conforms with what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that Allah commands, we have to engage with, we have to do. And anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, uh, says it's haram and it's prohibited, we disengage in that. If that happens, then the revolution already happens here, happened here, and the revival in the action already happens. Father yeah. <coughs> Just want to add so people don't uh, misunderstand what. Dr. Ayman has mentioned. Uh, he's talking about backwards. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, <laughs> uh, it's not he, what he. What I think what you meant is not just the personal uh, revival, working on yourself continuously, working on yourself. It's about building the aqidah, because revival requires something that you build on, which is the aqidah that has to be strong. Hmm. But after that, the revival, revival of what? Hmm. What is it? Is it just me, Ashraf, or it's the society and the community that I live in? It's about the society and the community that I live in. Because I, Ashraf, I cannot live on my own in the society. I have to interact with people. I have to deal with people, get married, do this, learn, teach, buy and sell and all of that. Part of the revival, part of the revival is to have all of these relationships also emanating from the same aqidah. Emanating from the same aqidah. And that's what Islam is. What Islam is, is a system of life. System so of life. Is, is that that's any ideology? Definitely. Right. Because I see the thing. What I wanted to kind of point out here is that if we are going to look at the problem of Masjid Aqsa from the perspective that people are looking at it today as a mm -hmm. Palestinian Arab whatever problem, then we are actually we are connected more closer to the aqidah of capitalism and communism and this ism and that ism more than we are connected to the aqidah of Islam. And and that danger that concept has to be understood uh, to the Muslims and by the Muslims that whoa hold on we are actually look we 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 are dealing with the masjid according to uh, the kuffar not even uh, Allah, Allah, Allah. look yes. look how much the issue of Palestine yeah. has been uh, you know been changing over time yeah. it started as the whole Palestine yeah then it started to be then uh, the West Bank we have dots. the West Bank yeah. uh, then after that it started to be part which is a, a small dots now it's you're talking about maybe 10 15 percent of Palestine yeah what were what all of these negotiations Less than so with time, because because now the solution that yeah. we're looking at I'm going to the United Nations mm -hmm. I'm not going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look for a solution. Mm -hmm. Part of the capitalist system that's living in the secular system that we live in, that's the solutions that they look at. This is the solution, this is the method. And if you look at what capitalism, let me just generalize, what capitalism, capitalism has led the whole world, mm -hmm. the whole world into chaos, yeah. everywhere, yeah. everywhere, yeah. everywhere, yeah. everywhere. You don't... If you and look the at solution the world, is to stop drinking tea, for instance, in Pakistan. Yes, yes that's, a, that's a solution. But <laughs> I mean, there's so, almost a revolt. Can so, you tell the Desis can so, drink tea? So think, 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 think about it. <laughs> the whole know. world lives with misery because yeah. of a system that's been yeah. implemented in them. And that system, when it comes to the issue of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, this is the solution that they have. Go and negotiate. Yeah. And the powerful wins. Go and negotiate. The powerful wins. 
After every intifada, after every intifada, the issue of Palestine goes less and less and less. What you are, what you are actually uh, discussing and trying to go and negotiate over, gets less and less and less. Islam is not like that. So the whole world now needs Islam. It's not just the issue of Palestine. Oh yeah. It's not just the issue People of Palestine. Of it's a bigger issue. Sure. Look at the issue of LGBT. Look at the issue of women rights. Look at the issue of of feminism. Look at these all issues. The, the economy. The economy. All poverty everywhere. Slavery everywhere. That's an outcome of a system that's been implemented on the people. Mm. Should I be continuously looking for a solution from this system that I know that it's leading in front of my eyes? I see it. No one denies it these days that it's leading people into misery. Is that where I should be looking for solutions? Or I should be looking for a solution from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the deen of Islam, which is correct in everything. That's where my focus should be. Uh, do you have any other questions here? Okay, so, uh, brothers and sisters, as, uh, of course, uh, Yani, uh, this discussion is uh, the discussion that needs to continue on uh, in not only here in this platform but actually in the homes of the Muslims and that was the whole idea was to present this issue that the Muslims need to look at not only Masjid Al-Aqsa, Babri Masjid, Makkah, Medina, every single Masjid that is under uh, uh, the colonial yoke in so many ways that even subhanAllah the Muslims themselves cannot pray in their own masajid. Uh, if not, they are worried that one day, if not today, tomorrow, a masjid that they are praying could be bulldozed, like in the masjid, uh, masjid of India. So, dear brothers and sisters, as we end this discussion, and we were talking about the revival, a revival needs to take place. It is, it is high time now, when you look at the situation of the Muslims, whether in Pakistan, where uh, yani, uh, the level of stupidity has gone to this point, where people are being told, uh, it's okay, just let, don't even drink tea, so that few rulers can have they can they can live in their palaces but the average poor person can't even drink tea properly subhanallah these are the kind of solutions that are being given to the masses while islam comes and says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this deen in order to take care of the affairs of the masses to actually take care of human beings as human beings not as animals and not even animals actually even to take care of the animals subhanallah so with this inshallah we will end this program and uh, we will bring you we'll come back again live on next friday it could be from here could be from somalia i'm not sure yet but uh, be sure to connect this in light ta'ala jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa